Anyway, our job today. Well, for starters, you can see our electric fences are starting to get grew in a wee bit with weeds in some of our paddocks because there's drains there and I can't really spray anything. What I'm doing at the minute is I'm coming into paddocks now like this here, one by one, and I'm going around with the strimmer and I'm just trimming back all them bits and pieces of weeds just to clean them away from the electric fence itself. You'll always get that where there's a fence. Weeds will love to grow because you can't get in beside them and top them, but we're going to clean that all up after. But for now, you can see we have an odd white pig pushed in here. And that's basically because the pole that would have been in this place has decided to lay down and disappear. So we're going to replace a couple of posts. We have to go over here and do the same in a barbed wire spot. So let's get to that now. tool that I found out recently and I've seen it on Instagram page very handy for screwing in them little insulators and taking them out as well and here was me thinking that I'd found the invention of the year and I was telling people on Instagram go and get yourself one of these I think they're about a five euros or something like that they're the best little thing I found in a long time and then I was told that agent to come free in a big box of them insulators when you're buying a big box you get these free and just ruined the whole thing for me. Right, so we're way on to the next job. The coal, you like spending time working with your dad? No. Now, we're on to the next wee job. And in here into the corner, behind some of them winds there, winds around here grow viciously. And um, they're just, <laughs> in no time they'd be out across the field if you didn't keep them trimmed back. But there's two row barbed wire in there. As you can see, the corner post has decided to do one of those. And you can see the state of it. And that's not a huge length of time in, um, and it's just broken out completely. And there's another one laying here beside it. <laughs> I came off here on this other side. So we're going to drop in a post there, a treated post this time, and hopefully it'll last a bit longer. Right, so that's that done, an awkward wee spot, no doubt about it, an awkward spot. But you can see, now don't look too closely, I know what you guys can be like with your fencing, and it's not pretty, far from it. But another post there, I had to go a wee bit closer because there was no real way to access in any further. There's a tree there, 
and there's a three there that, that wire is already pulled to. So it's not taking a whole pile of pressure here. All I really want is to get the wire up off the ground and have it secure that the thing at least is stock proof again. This is a marching hedge here, neighboring hedge. So yeah, just getting it tidied up like that, it's done. That hedge there and this hedge here across, um, I'm gonna trim that hedge, give it a real good trim um, in the autumn time with the hedge trimmer and just cut them briars back right to the barbed wire that's inside there. Now this whole farm, when my father bought it, way back in the 50s, every one of these fields you see here were completely covered in winds. You couldn't access any fields. My father said you wouldn't know what size the farm really was only for a map. Just completely covered in winds and he cleared them all with the slash hook, bill hook, whatever you want to call it. And he just walked out a day and night and he got the whole thing cleared up. Um, so you just have to keep them in check and keep them trimmed back. I did do this whole hedge um, a few years back and I done it with a chainsaw. That's how I done it. And faced the whole thing back and built two gigantic piles here and here. And then I wired the whole thing. You can see the two row wire that's in behind. And you can just see how much the winds then have grown out um, in the past while. So they don't be long coming out into a field. So we'll get that sorted in the autumn time. <laughs> at this uh, one thing I did want to point out the only thing I didn't uh, now I could spray these by the way they're in the middle of a fence there's no drain around but look at it, it only takes me a few minutes to run the strimmer it's only an odd wee place there's a few tissels coming but ragwort like this here don't really strim them or even when you're topping them be careful because when you top them or strim them they fall on the ground they start to die and they lose their potency which stops the cattle from being reluctant to eat them you wouldn't believe the amount of them gets topped and lays on the ground. That's where the cattle actually picks them up if the paddock isn't long laying before the cows go back in, if you get what I mean. So when you come across ragwort, or ragweed we call it, there's only one thing to do with them. kind of gives you kind of an understanding of what I kind of be at between making our videos on Sundays and a lot of people do ask me how come you don't put up two or three videos a week and it's I'd love to yes absolutely but I just don't have the time all the time's taken up with these just looking around going and looking cattle looking cows just keeping an eye on things a set of eyes are the most important thing and my father used to do a lot of looking the cattle for me and things um, especially over to the farm. He used to go over in the quad quite often. He still does the odd time, but just not the same anymore. So I kind of do most of that now, nearly all myself, and that takes up quite a bit of time, but it's one of the most important things. It's time well spent. Right, so the next job. We issue with our quad today, and I don't often get to say that because it's generally a very reliable workhorse, this quad. We've had it since 2010. It's a 2008 or 2009 model. It's about a year old, a little over a year old when we bought it. There's almost, what on it now, hours. It's, it's up there in the hours, I suppose, for a quad. Almost three and a half thousand hours in it. Um, but it's all road work and it's not really heavy work. It's doing a bit, but not really heavy work. It's more used for going and looking our cattle back and forth to the other farm. It's much easier on fuel. It's much handy to just jump on it. You're over there in minutes. Um, it's just so much handy. You're going through paddocks, moving fences. It's a vital bit of equipment on our farm. Um, but there about a probably about two weeks ago I noticed a little bit of movement in the front end of the quad one of the ways it's very handy to tell if you've got play in the front obviously moving the wheel is one of them if you let the quad roll back put your foot on the back brakes the front end will become light you'll see and hear the movement you'll feel it on the steering as well quite normal for a quad of this age and with them hours 
It's very normal for them little bushings to go. I'm surprised they haven't went ages ago. And trust me, we've never replaced a single bushing on this quad or ever had to touch anything basically on it apart from back brakes. The front brakes are still original. I'll probably have a look at them now when they're off and see what kind of condition they're in as well. But this is the problem we have today. If we move our wheel back and forth, if you look at this, if you can see it, hope you can see it. Do you see that movement? And you can see it the whole way into the wheel. You see the shock and all moving when I push the wheel in? Well, that shouldn't be happening. That should be solid. That's shock and all. Every mechanism is moving because these bushings here are completely worn. And of course you can see my help is always here. Now, have a look at our brake pads. Yeah, <laughs> they're not in good shape. So we'll have to order a set of them. Now look at the play. You see that for yourself, so look at that there. Definitely time to do something with that. Man, there you go. Now, the trick is, will this come out? Without removing the guard, it won't. Ah, bugger. Maybe. Oh, happy days. We'll just pull this out. It's just a nylon bushing. Take both of those off first. That's that. Yeah, definitely wear there. Can you see that in the camera? There's wear there, plenty of wear. Just starting to dig in on both sides. All right, so one of the little obstacles I have at the minute is inside that there, there's a nylon bushing. Um, I don't know if you can see it there. It's chipped here on the outside, but that there, if you see the liner where I put with the screwdriver here trying to get it out, that's a nylon bushing or plastic bushing, whatever you want to call it. But there's the replacement for it there. So I have to get this one out just to get this one to push into its place, which you would imagine be fairly easy, but it's not. Um, the reason it's not is it's just glued in there with rust and dirt and stuff and all it wants to do is shatter. Every time you touch it, it just wants to shatter. So the best thing to do is either get a wee screwdriver, cut it the whole way down with a sharp edge screwdriver, or even get yourself a hacksaw blade, take it off the hacksaw, put it down there, saw it back and forth, and just saw it in a few different places to loosen it up, and then it should pop out. Now, if you're ever getting stuck and you're pulling and pulling at this, um, trying to get it out, and you're using the screwdriver and it's not working and it's just not happening and you're starting to panic a bit there's several ways you can make your life a lot easier and that is take the whole thing off loosen this loosen this take this off take off this as well and out you come and put in the vise and you have more access to it or you could be like me and don't want to do that and just get a bigger screwdriver boom The next thing we have is our two end caps. That should pop in there. The wheel lock of grease in the bolt. And just shove it back in there. Now it's line it up properly. There it is. So you remember before what it was like? Well, there's your play there now. All you have is steering movement. No other movement anyway whatsoever. It's lovely and tight. And that make a big difference, trust me. When you're driving your quad on the field, especially, or even on the road. That can make a big difference. Job done. Just a wee bit of a U-turn there. I took the wheel back off again because when I put the wheel on, I noticed another little bit of movement. You see that movement there? Can you make that out? Well, look at the castle nut. The castle nut's very loose. So it could be a bearing. 
Um, I'm not going to take it off because I'm going to do the brakes probably in another week. I'm going to order a set of brakes for it now that I know they're worn down. Um, but that cast is loose. I'm going to give it a little bit of a tightening. It could be just down a little bit of wear. So, small bit of a tightening. And that's that movement gone. And hopefully, that might solve it. Yeah, no movement. Well, the movement we have is the right type of movement, but no other movement. Solid. Let's stick you here on a very quick time lapse and we'll get this one done. Do you know where sometimes I say that things don't always go? as easy as it comes across on YouTube because we edit out all the bits and pieces or things we drop or working on things like this. It's one of the most hardest things to actually film is working on a bit of mechanical stuff because stuff can take a long time and your battery be gone and then your hands covered in grease and so on and so on. So when I was putting on this arm here, there's a rubber that I showed you on the far side, the dust cap. Little slip when I was putting it in. This dust cap went missing. Well, 20 minutes later, myself and the girls was up helping me looking and looking and looking for it we've absolutely looked everywhere nearly was going to have to put the old one back on it was getting that bit of a problem until i decided to take the bottom engine cover off the quad pull this out and i still couldn't see anything and then lo and behold way in there in the very far corner couldn't have been hid in a worse spot there it is Right, so that's it done. That's everything replaced. That'll make a big difference to the front of that quad. Want me tools through in the back of it here because it's nice and bright to work up here. At least you guys can kind of see a bit hard there on the far side. It's just the type of day that it is. It's very overcast. It's a little bit brighter than down the shed and hopefully you guys were fit to make out what I was doing. But a simple job that anybody can do. Now we have a nice solid steering uh, with no play in it, with zero play in it. That's what we want. I will order a set of brake pads now when I go down this evening and um, get them probably in a couple of days and install them as well just to leave the front end of that right because otherwise the quad is perfect everything works on it it's just been so reliable such a great workhorse plenty of power to do whatever you want and relatively easy to maintain and that's just the simple fact of it but anyway that's it I'm going to finish up and go down and get my dinner and start the next job until the next one folks we'll talk to you again <laughs>